Coffee with the Editor is proudly brought to you by IRZ. Thank you very much, Philippa. I'm also glad to have come for this uh, interview. Awesome. So, um, I don't want to talk about uh, the recapitalization program. I want to talk about some of the other things that you guys have been doing. Um, you mentioned earlier about the solar powered producers. So, tell me a little bit more about that project and uh, the future, the progress, or the possibilities of that project. Okay, uh, thank you. Before I come to the publicities, I need to talk about us unlocking value in our certain areas of expertise. We've got what we call the Inderail Tech, which is a brand that we've put in place. It is our engineering brand. Uh, remember, we've got um, major workshops in Lawa and Mutare, which we call the mechanical workshops. And in these workshops, we do a lot of engineering work that includes uh, uh, building uh, coaches, uh, repairing locomotives and the like. Previously, these mechanical workshops were mainly for our inside inside job or inside equipment. Mm -hmm. But realizing what the country has gone through for the past two decades, we realized that a lot of companies have closed shop. And seeing that gap, the NRZ realized that it has got uh, this engineering expertise. And the engineering expertise can come in to cover the gap for most players who need certain equipment, be uh, it in manufacturing, uh, in mining, in agriculture industry. And this is the reason why we've come up with what we call Indareo Tech. Right. It is engineering for success. We want to build things for other uh, industries. Like as I'm speaking right now, we were actually coming up, in fact, in our last mine entry in Zimbabwe, we produced and tested what we call the underground mining uh, equipment for different uh, mines, which they can use to load and then we go into rail and straight where it's supposed to go. Okay. So basically, this is the, the indirect object for you to unlock our engineering expertise, our value, and do something for the gap that has been left by closed companies. Mm. And uh, it's now part of a big project, big brand. That is why we call it in Then uh, coming to your cabooses, we realized that uh, looking at uh, the environmental aspect, and also the issue of saving energy. We realized that we need to research on how we can go about in terms of using other energy sources such as solar. You understand that solar is now being used in a lot of areas, uh, not only in Africa, but also, also in parts of Asia and other areas. So we said, no, let us come up with this and um, we, we actually built solar-powered cabooses, which... Uh, Did you build them yourselves? Yes. Okay. We have the expertise, you mm. know, as... So uh, I just wanted to make sure yes. you built them in your own factory. <laughs> yes, in our own, uh, these uh, mechanical workshops that we mm. talk about, we built these solar-powered uh, 
Kabusis, uh, this solar this, this solar powered Kabusis will definitely uh, give us an opportunity to use other energies other than electricity. Because in some cases we have to go for the for the uh, if the electric, electricity goes, we also need to go for the use of generators. And generators, the aspect with them, they are not only expensive, they also have the noise effect. But with the, the solar-powered cabooses, there is no that kind of aspect, that kind of noise. So we build these uh, solar-powered cabooses, and uh, now what we need to do is to make sure that uh, we build more so that uh, we can actually use them. Uh, currently we are using for them for our operational teams. Say if they leave Blawai or Harare for some project, they go out and use uh, this, uh, uh, using these solar powered campuses. So definitely the future looks uh, good and uh, as I speak right now, we haven't faced uh, any delimitations from these solar powered campuses that we, we, we did. And uh, we are happy about that progress. It's actually an innovation that is synonymous with the NRZ, because the National Railways of Zimbabwe, as you know from Railways Africa, mm. it has always led in terms of these innovations, mm. uh, including even the electric diesels in the early 90s, mm. uh, the electric locomotives in the early 90s, was actually Zimbabwe. It was one of the should be one of the first countries in, in, in Africa to come up with the, the electric uh, uh, locomotives. Wow. So we want to take back that role to lead mm. uh, uh, because we are the regional hub. Yes. Yes. The last time we spoke, you mentioned to me that you guys, and I know we published an article on it. Um, the, the impact it's having on your track in, in relation to the gold panners and how are you guys managing this illegal mining on your reserve? I think in terms of illegal gold panning, we have uh, made some ground in terms of uh, getting the relevant players on board. Mm. When we talk of the relevant players, we are looking at your environmental management agents, which we call EMA in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. And we also have um, the Minister of Mines, uh, which is uh, which is working on some uh, act so that they can control uh, the illegal gold uh, miners. Uh, most of these uh, miners they come in as artisanal miners, but at the end of the day, they then become more illegal gold miners because they operate in areas that are not uh, sort of endorsed, especially by the Railways Act. You take note that the Railways Act is uh, one of the first few regulatory uh, documents or regulatory uh, policies that were put in place uh, by, by, by uh, the country. And uh, so you find that it says either side of the railway, 45 meters either side of the railway, you are not supposed to do any activity. Yes. And then uh, around 180 at the railway level in the section, 180 meters, you are not supposed to do anything there. So what we have done is we have engaged these teams so that we can keep uh, the illegal gold panning that is taking place. Most of the areas that have been hit hard by this illegal gold panning uh, activity, they are your Bindura area. And you understand in Bindura we have the, the nickel mm. that definitely comes to South Africa. We export nickel from Bindura Nickel Mine, mm. it comes down to South Africa, uh, South African ports. And then we, we also have a lot of gold uh, mines in, in those areas. We've got your Jumbo area, your Tatagura area. Then we also have uh, the Kwekwe, the Midlands area, where uh, it is also uh, uh, hit hard by illegal gold panning. Mm -hmm. We have also Shurugui, uh, S. Godin areas as you go towards Bike Bridge, uh, all those areas. But we have carried out campaigns. Mm -hmm. uh, 
the, the campaign campaigns that have uh, uh, actually borne our fruit in terms of uh, uh, what we want. Uh, and these campaigns we've been doing them with the uh, Zimbabwe Electricity Supply Authority, which is popularly known as ZESA in Zimbabwe. We okay. uh, also have your another electrical uh, uh, player, ZETDC, mm -hmm. which is also there. We also have your your telephone kanban, then line telephone kanban called Tel1 yes. uh, uh, and other players who are also affected by this because those people they've got poles in those areas where those poles are, if they are timbered with, it means their networks are, what, are, are also timbered with. So basically we have run campaigns but we feel it's not enough, we need this to escalate to a level where the Ministry of Mines itself owns this issue yeah. uh, because it will not make sense for us to own it when the Minister of Mines is actually looking the other way. Yeah. So for us we need to bring them on board and not only bring them on board but make sure that they own this thing and that they own the fight, they own the campaign and they are the leader in the campaign. So I was quite, quite interested to hear and I and I wonder how you guys can apply this as well. So Transnet Freight Rail is using drone technology um, as part of their, you know, it's called a crime prevention, for want of a better word. Um, the drones patrol um, affected areas, uh, send the information back, um, they can pick out you know, what's happening, where, I think that would be good technology. Yes, we wouldn't have a problem with that. Uh, what we need is uh, a simple com commitment. Because when you then use that kind of uh, technology, you then need to have uh, a commitment from the technological players, so that when we run those drones, we also do it in a manner where we don't get uh, so, something like stage manage. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes we can uh, take these drawings mm -hmm. and people are already there. Mm -hmm. All they want is to stage manage that and say, this, we have done this so that they can lure uh, 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 financiers mm -hmm. to uh, such kind of programs. Mm -hmm. we, if we do it and if we get the equipment, we want to do a genuine job where that job will be able to sift uh, uh, intruders or people mm. who are bent on destroying our our infrastructure because we need to take note that uh, uh, for us the main business currently is freight service mm. and uh, if we have uh, by any chance uh, get involved in any accident or serious derailment. Mm. What it means is that we are going to lose millions in terms of money itself. Mm. We are going to lose millions in terms of equipment. And of course, the most important thing, the lives will be lost. Not only lives on board, uh, that is the crews that will be uh, uh, driving the train, mm. but uh, we are also looking at uh, 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 people who are underground. I think if you're following Zimbabwe news recently, so far there have been two mines that have simply submerged yes. uh, in Zimbabwe and uh, one was around Kwekwe, battlefields. Mm. So we, we, we are looking at uh, saving not only the equipment but lives for all Zimbabweans. And this is uh, the information that the Ministry of Mines need to get mm. to save the lives of people and then the infrastructure of the country, yes. Um, I believe you guys are using WhatsApp as a good communication tool for both your customers and uh, for incident reporting. Yeah, but we mostly use it in terms of uh, uh, signal communication. Okay. Because uh, you remember there was a lot of vandalism. Yes. That was done from uh, the late 90s uh, up to around 2010. Mm -hmm. People want copper cables and the like, especially the area between uh, Kweru and, uh, and Arari. Mm -hmm. 
So for us, you find that most of our that CNC system that we have, the CTC, sorry, not CNC, CTC, CTC yeah. uh, train control system mm. uh, that we, we have, it's, uh, it's there in terms of uh, doing this work, but it's no longer covering all areas because of the signals that were tempered around there. Mm. So what we have seen is for us to, for the drivers and the crews to use the texts and even the WhatsApp to say I'm, uh, I'm going to Blawa and I've, I'm now in query and then the other train also coming say from Chirez can also report to say that I'll be passing there now now or at that time. Mm. So yeah for sure we are using it for signals, mostly signals communication okay. uh, so that our crews we do not uh, have, have uh, a head on. Yes. <laughs> That's terrifying. A accident. <laughs> so, yes, he, 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 the good thing about um, a rail is that you you need to use all available options mm. so that you don't cause uh, damage. Because uh, if you don't do that, there will be extensive damage. Sometimes you think you can keep say, a certain accidents, yeah. but uh, 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 if you fail, it will be actually a serious damage, not only to, to the equipment in terms of the trains, but it may take you to another level, down, down there. Yeah. And you need to, when you start, it will be a tall, tall, tall order. Skills development and training for, for your staff as you start going into the hopefully very soon next phase of, of progress? Our training has always been there, Philippa. And uh, we've got one of the well-resourced training center in the region, okay. where we train artisans, we, we train um, different mechanical trades. Uh, and train drivers? And train drivers okay. also. And uh, for your own information, as we speak right now, uh, in uh, 2017, we were approved as a technical college, that is our training center. Wow. Yes. I so didn't know that. yes, you don't know that. I didn't know that. Oh, then I'll have to prepare something to give you. <laughs> the, the, the technical college uh, what it is now doing is that we are now allowed uh, by the Ministry of Higher Education to recruit uh, other people or other students from uh, outside the rail system. That means your, your telephone system guys, your ZESA guys, that is Zimbabwe Electricity Supply Authority. You also have your raw uh, student, somebody who just want to come and do a, a course in an area that he or she is interested in. So we were actually given this. And uh, as you know, every year we always have uh, uh, refresher courses mm. for all levels. Yes, yes at our training center. But the, the most important thing is the technical college. The technical college that we now have, that is now in place. And uh, as we speak right now, they are recruiting people who are also doing that. This is on top of uh, the apprenticeship that oh, okay. we have always been offered. Yes. So definitely that one is in course. As NRZ, as uh, remember I talked about us unlocking value in certain areas of expertise. We have also unlocked the value in terms of our uh, the land aspect, real estate. You are aware that NRZ has got uh, vast land in, uh, in Zimbabwe. And we are saying we want to lure investors for development purposes. This is another area that we are unlocking value. Then we are also unlocking value in terms of tourism, where we are diversifying to say besides the passenger services that we offer, we, there is an opportunity for tourism. And in this, story, in this tourism, we've got two aspects. The first aspect that we have is that one of premier class, mm -hmm. where we are luring uh, international tourists as well as domestic tourists to say, why don't you come and enjoy a nice weekend at the Victoria Falls 
you book a premier class coach, you go to Victoria Falls, you enjoy yourself, you are also uh, taking care of your accommodation with that coach, you don't have to be, to, 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 to then book a hotel or end lodge. In other words, you are having savings. Mm. So you have your food and everything. You go in our coach, you spend the weekend in, in Victoria Falls Sunday. We come back with you uh, after your, your, your nice leisure time. Mm. So this is one aspect which is growing every day uh, mm -hmm. in, in, in Blauai. Uh, this is specifically for Blauai Bozi. We want our people to go to, to the uh, most important uh, wonder, which is the Victoria Falls, one of the eight wonders of the world. So that's one aspect. The second aspect is that of running steam excursions. Mm -hmm. We have seen that we started running steam excursions in 2010. And in 20, from 2010, it hasn't been getting that uh, enthusiastic aspect or attraction from uh, the so-called uh, train enthusiasts or, 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 or tourists. So basically it has picked up like this year it has picked up. We recorded our highest numbers of 361 uh, from Harare to lecture to as a Harare Kinte steam excursion. And we had 220 uh, adults and uh, 141 are uh, children. They went for bed viewing and enjoyed everything at Green by Sheep. Oh, wow. That was on 28 April. Then uh, on Mother's Day, we ran another one, which again clocked over 200 uh, uh, patrons. Mm -hmm. It ran from uh, Blawa to Plum Tree, and it came back well. And we are happy that uh, some of the training enthusiasts have said, we need a schedule for this. We need to have this running time and again. Yeah. So basically, uh, the steam excursions are another area that we are saying it can diversify and also make people learn more about trains, get the experience and the heritage of trains uh, through the steam excursions. How many steam trains do you have? For us, uh, in terms of locomotives, uh, mm -hmm. we still have uh, uh, should be three, three to five. Trend is between three to five.